to the person who's been tracking it for us here, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank, joining us with where Ian is heading next. Rachel? Yeah, Ian is just going to be crawling through Florida as we sleep tonight with heavy rain, the wind slowly diminishing, and the water level slowly easing up. For the while that we've been tracking this storm, we've been talking about how storm surge would likely be the greatest impact, and you saw all of those videos of inundation in city areas and other communities alike, areas with inlets and Florida is so flat. So some of that flooding went even farther inland. So what is storm surge? Well, you have the typical water level that's associated with your normal high tide. Add on top of that, that the storm ended up making landfall near astronomical high tide. So it was already near high tide caused by the moon's gravitational pull, which was right around three o'clock when the storm made landfall. Add on top of that, that persistent onshore flow really picking up the Gulf of Mexico and pushing it onto shore. It had nowhere to go. That ended up resulting in a record storm surge of seven feet for areas like Fort Myers and for Naples. For Fort Myers, that water level is slowly starting to come down. In Naples, it's taking a bit more time. And in some areas, it was likely up to a foot or so, uh, not a foot, 12 feet, I should say. And we still haven't gotten the official numbers, but we did for those two locations. I also want to talk about rainfall because that's playing a role as well. And that's something that we haven't talked as much about because the first concern and primary issue was the surge. I want to tell you when I'm showing you these rainfall amounts that already 10 to as much as 15 inches of rain has already fallen in these areas. And now there's as much as three to 12 inches of additional rain on the way from Sarasota all the way to Daytona Beach, Jacksonville, and now into Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina with some heavy rain on the way there as well. Uh, let's take a look at where the storm is right now. 50 miles to the northeast of Punta Gorda, Florida with winds of 100 miles per hour, and it's moving to the north northeast at eight miles per hour. So I just mentioned that there would be some heavy rain in areas in the southeast. I also wanted to show you there are tropical storm warnings that are now up for the Georgia coastline and also for the southeastern shore as well. What about here at home? That's the million dollar question. You guys have been so patient while I've been going through all the facts about this storm. Area of high pressure keeping us protected. That is why the weather has been so beautiful over the course of the last couple of days. And we got two more gorgeous days with high pressure pressure shielding us, but eventually we start to lose the battle. Now there is a chance for some rain here from indirect moisture from Ian. It's not going to be from the storm itself, but some of the moisture kind of on the leading edge of this tropical system we will be a little bit breezy on Saturday. Chance for some showers or a period of rain, but again, nothing significant, nothing compared to what our friends in the south are dealing with. And we'll also see an increase in clouds as we head into your Friday too. So heading through the evening tonight, low temperatures around 50 degrees. Tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. It's another beauty. Highs in the mid to upper 60s. Friday's looking great too, but we'll start to see increasing clouds as some of that moisture moves north. So it's mostly cloudy with highs in the 60s. Showers, maybe a period of rain during the day on Saturday. And look at these cooler temperatures. Temperatures highs only in the 50s to around 60 for now. We're just cloudy on Sunday highs close to 60 degrees. So the weekend may be a little bit gloomy and then another chance for showers as we head into Tuesday of next week. Your shoreline seven day is in the 60s. So fall really making its presence felt guys.